I had the chance to sit down and watch the movie, and I've got to say, it absolutely blew me away. It was such a fantastic film. So I was wondering if you could start off by telling us a little bit about how you became involved with the film in the first place. Uh, yeah, I, um, uh, well, I knew Storm uh, from a film I did called The Infinite Man, which uh, we filmed in South Australia a few years ago, and he was working on that, and we got to know each other, and then he came to me, uh, and, and Blake, the producer, came to me uh, one night with this uh, with this story, and that's how I got involved. So for our listeners out there who haven't had a chance to see the film, how would you describe Seth as a character? Uh, I mean, he's very tormented. Um, he hallucinates all the time. He suffers from severe PTSD, uh, deep grief. Um, yeah, he's, he's extremely troubled, but he's very loyal. Um, he's made mistakes, um, uh, redeemable mistakes, I think. Um, and he's got a big heart. Yeah. How did you go about doing research for the role of Seth? Because there are some very harrowing scenes in there um, when he is going through moments of post-traumatic stress. So how did you actually go about preparing for that role? Were you able to go and talk to returned servicemen who had suffered from post-traumatic stress? Well, we're lucky enough to have some um, servicemen on, on set uh, who would help us to with telling the story and the scenarios that we're in um, and uh, tell us, yeah, stories about what they've seen and what they've been through. Um, in terms of uh, telling the story of PTSD and the torment that that character was going through, I sort of, I YouTube a lot of stuff, um, Google a lot of videos and tried to personalise it myself. Um, and just get into a really, <laughs> really dark place. Yeah. Think really dark thought. <laughs> yeah. What What kind of things were you finding on YouTube? Um, I was, uh, I was sort of delving into uh, what happens when people have like, anxiety, deep anxiety, um, when they have nightmares, um, night terrors, as well. Yeah. Um, and also just like the physical, what manifests physically with PTSD, um, to try and get some, get some, uh, get that into my body. Yeah. 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 What was it about this film that really made you want to do it after you um, read the script? You mentioned, of course, talking to Storm, but was there something about this film that made it really stand out to you actually after you'd had that chance to sit down and read the script? Yeah, look, I wanted to work with Storm again and Blake, uh, who were were great guys. Uh, The team was really solid. And also, I think PTSD is a, and mental health actually as a whole is, is, something that we need to keep keep exploring and telling yeah um, uh, and what better we do it in in film format um uh it's yeah it's i mean it's life-threatening and these these uh, men and women come back from such an unnecessary um event war and suffer from it yeah, yeah. Storm is an amazing director. I've loved his work, loved his films like The School. What is he like to work with as a director? <laughs> he's great. Um, he's, he's very friendly. He's a good uh, mate of mine as well. So we had a, a, an easy rapport and um, uh, he's very open to changes uh, and improvisation and uh, very sympathetic and understanding. Yeah. And it's a nice human being. Yeah. yeah. When I talked to Storm before, he said that one of the keys to this movie was communication between himself and you during some of the the more harrowing, harrowing scenes that you did, especially the scenes with Hugh. Um, how did you find that communication as a director and uh, as an actor? And what was he like directing you through those really harrowing scenes? Um, it's... I mean, it's tough because you've got to sort of listen <laughs> and, be, uh, and be open 
uh, and friendly, but then you've also got to try and stay in that dark place. So it's just, it's a weird crossroads. Uh, I'm not sure I can answer that. Um, yep. Very well, I'm sorry. And yeah. yeah I'm, not, I'm not sure. It's, sort of, it's a bit of a blur. Yeah. Uh, but but for an actor for yourself like those scenes down in the pit or those scenes where you're getting uh, waterboarded what were they like as an actor to have to, to go through um, those scenes um, um, I didn't have to act it was as if you were getting waterboarded and just <laughs> reacting off uh, that uh, yeah it was I mean easy yep. to act to but uh, terrifying in the moment yeah. How do you turn off from that at the end of the day? Like, how do you go from doing a scene where you're being waterboarded to, to going home that night or to just tuning out as you finish the shoot for the day? Well, I think uh, actors all have their own process, but I, I find there's a big, I mean, speak about mental health again, there's a big, a lot of mental issues in, in the art. Um, because we, you pour your heart and soul into it and, and then you just have to go home and you know cook dinner and pretend everything's normal. So, I, I don't know, I'm still trying to find that healthy routine. I mean, quite often I'll go home and have a cigarette and a beer yep. um, uh, and, and try to wind down like that. But, it, it, I don't know, it's tough. You just, you've got to sort of try to read a book or watch something else or even just hang out with your cast and debrief. I find that quite helpful. Yeah. Um, but everyone has their own sort of process, and I don't know if there is a right answer because it is. If you are dealing with deep grief, and um, I don't know, it's something that that affects you mentally. It, it, it is really difficult to wind down. Yeah, yeah. The other thing, too, that really hit me about Seth as a character is in a lot of American movies, Seth would have been kind of like your Rambo-style character, whereas here, he is portrayed as a damaged man who's trying to find a way out of it. Um, tell us a little bit about how that made you feel, being able to play a role where it was more realistic than, say, your action movie where it would have been a Rambo-like character. I mean, it was, it's much more rewarding to play a real-life, or to try and play a real-life character, but I assume uh, the actor who plays Rambo was trying to make it a real-life character too, you know? I don't know. Um, it's, I, I, I don't know. I always come to, uh, come to a process trying to play a real-life character. Yep. And make them real to us as possible, so, but, yeah. I wouldn't do it any other way. So for me, um, it was rewarding to do that. Yeah. Yeah. One of the other rewarding things with this movie as well was it's picked up awards at the Veterans Film Festival. How much did that mean to you that this film has been so well received by veterans out there as well? Uh, Yeah, it means a lot. It means that we're telling the story um, well and that we're affecting people that, um, that matter, I guess. Yeah, Yeah. I guess to to finish up, um, is there anything out there that you would like to say to um, Aussie cinema goers before they head out to check out the film over this weekend? Uh, Check out more Australian films uh, because we need it. And uh, if you see it in the first week, that's a lot better because Australian films will continue to roll on into the next week. So always see an Australian film in the first week. Definitely. Well, Josh, thank you again so much for chatting to us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. And again, congratulations on this fantastic film. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Not a problem, mate. All right. You have a great day and hopefully we get to talk again in the future. You too. Catch you later. All right. Thanks, mate. Bye.